guys, Samantha from Jessima Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to create a fun pendant uh, using a tomato leaf. So first we are going to make the background for our piece. So I've brought over a piece of plain printing paper and I've just got a piece of clay here that was rolled out on my thickest setting. And I'm just going to burnish it so that we've got a nice matte finish on both sides. And any uh, just plain old printing paper will work. You can use deli paper as well. Just make sure that it doesn't have any um, uh, lines marked on it because the clay can pick up the ink. Okay, and just give it a decent burnish like that, and that should give us a nice matte surface. Okay, and I'm going to use a silk screen, and this is our background. And this is the silk screen that I'm using, it's my number 21. Uh, and I sell that on my Etsy shop for Jessima Design. And I'm going to be using the succulents. Okay. And this is the cutter that I am using, so you can see that it fits nicely inside the silk screen. And I'm going to be double printing it. So. Um, once this side has been printed and has dried, I will repeat the process on the back side. That way our back will have a uh, pattern on it as well, which is just nice. Okay. I'm just making sure that I've got it nicely burnished down, that way we get a nice crisp pattern. And I'm just going to be using white acrylic paint. Here's the brand. Any uh, white paint acrylic paint should work for this. I try to use a brand that's not too thin but not too thick at the same time. Uh, if it's too thin then you find that it leads through the screen but if it's too thick it doesn't go through the screen very easily. Okay. I'll just print it like so. And I'll just lift that up and you can see we've got a nice clean print. Let that dry, clean your silk screen, let the silk screen dry, and then repeat on the other side. Okay, then while that is drying, I've burnished a, another piece of clay, and this was rolled out on my second thinnest setting of my pasta machine. And I'm going to be using a tomato leaf today. A mint leaf will also work well, or any leaves that have decent back veins uh, that you can find will work for this. Now I have based the shape of my project around the shape of the leaf, so I'm going to be using convex spearhead uh, cutters since they match the shape of the leaf quite well. Depending on the shape of the leaf that you have, you might want to change the shape of your cutter. Okay, and I'm gently going to press that into the clay, like so, and grab a piece of paper and burnish it thoroughly. And you want it to be vein side down so that you get a nice imprint. Give that a proper burnish. And there we go, you can see it that's uh, well shaped. Okay. Okay, and while that's in the clay, I'm just going to trim away this excess clay because I don't want to um, get mica powder or in this case metallic paste onto clay that ultimately I'm not going to use. So just trim that out the way, leaving a decent border so that you have plenty of space to cut out a piece. Okay, and then you can just use that again. Okay, and I'm going to be using one of these um, colour shifting pastes. And this is the colour that I'm choosing for the outside. I'll actually use the lid. Just grab a bit and do this while the leaf is still in place because you'll find that it then stops you from um, it will give it a nice crisp outline whereas if you try to do this after the leaf has been removed uh, you won't get as nice a outline just rub that over the surface and go back and check that there's been enough rubbed on every once in a while okay then when that is done I'd like to just give it a very quick burnish just to get that paste stuck down onto the clay. Okay, and then using a blade or anything that you find useful for picking up the leaf, 
I'm just going to stop the stem because it's easiest to grab a hold of. And then gently work that out the clay. And you can see what a nice clean image that's given us. Okay, and I want to antique it once it has been baked because you, you can highlight it right now but you'll find that it gets uh, mixed up with the uh, border colour and I actually only want to highlight the veins. So for now I'm going to leave it the way it is and I'm just going to cut it out. Okay, so I've just positioned it in the right spot. Then I want you to cut straight down. And lift up. And peel away that excess clay. Pop that into the oven for half an hour at Primo's recommended temperature to set it. Okay, and here it is out of the oven. So, now we're going to antique this. And now because uh, of our silk screened back, I want to match up with the same colour, so I'll be antiquing this with white. If you want to use a different colour, I'd recommend uh, silk screening with the same colour. Okay, just popping a little white acrylic paint over there. I'm going to use a small brush and then make sure to get a good cover in those veins. And try not to brush on the um, oh gosh, the uh, already coloured part. It's all right if you get a little bit on there, but the less you have on there, the better. Okay, and just paint across the whole piece. Uh, try to have a thinnish layer. You want the colour to be nice and strong and not see through, but you also don't want it to be sitting in gobs everywhere. And just continue across the whole piece. Okay, and there we go. And I've let it dry for um, about a minute or so. Now I'm just going to take a wet wipe and I'm going to start by cleaning the edges. Just going to go around and wipe away that paint. Don't scrape too hard. You want to just be dabbing. And because it's acrylic paint, it should come off relatively easily without too much trouble. And I'll just tend to the edges like so. Then, when they're done and completely clean, then I'll do the inside. Okay, and it's pretty clean. Then I want you to just go in and just gently start running over the surface and just swap to a clean spot every once in a while. And you'll start to lift up the paint on the surface, leaving the bits in the veins. And this works best once the paint has dried for a bit. You just go over and clean up most of the paint, like so. And then just run back over to get it completely clean. Okay. And if you mess up at any point and you rub off too much paint, you can always just reapply. Uh, the paint, wait for it to dry, and then try again. Okay, and here is how uh, it should look. So it looks quite nice. So now I'm just going to bring over some Kato uh, clear liquid clay. And we only need a little bit of that. Just pop that onto its back. Grab a little bit. And just spread that around the piece, like so. And having baked it, you can just see how this makes the whole process easier. Just because you don't have to worry about distorting it or messing up. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to bring over the piece from earlier, and you can see that I have printed on both sides. just bring this over and I'm going to choose a nice spot for it. And I think that looks nice. Okay. And now before I press down, just want to check that that will work. Yep. Okay. 
press down nice and firm. I'll actually even just use a piece of paper just to give it a quick burn, pressing it down into the clay. Okay, then go and position your piece. And so I've positioned it so that it is in the middle. Just cut straight down, making sure to get a nice clean cut. And then lift up, move that out of the way, and then press down on the baked area so you don't get any fingerprints. Okay. Okay, and there we go. How it looks. So I'm just going to pop it down onto the piece of paper. Okay, and I'm going to bake that for a full hour at pretty much recommended temperature. And then when it is done, we can apply a layer of resin to the top here, just on this cabochon, so that it kind of looks like a cabochon. And we'll just apply something like Renaissance wax or a uh, varnish of some sort around the edges after we've done the resin. And here it is out of the oven. So I've let it cool and now we're going to apply resin to the top. And I'm going to be using magic gloss and I'm using this because um, it's quite a uh, good resin to use if you're being very precise and don't want the resin falling off of the edges. Um, the other resin that I usually use will work but this one's just a lot less uh, risky since we only want it on the cabochon surface. So I'm just going to take that and I'll pop that on. Just going to add a little bit on there because it's quite thick. Okay, and that should be enough for now. Now I'm going to be careful when I pull this away so that I don't get any drips. Okay. Then I'll just use two piercing pins and I'll start gently spreading this out and I'll bring it up to the edges like so. You could just see if you've seen me use the other resin or even if you've used it yourself, you'll see that this is quite a bit thicker. The colder the resin is as well, uh, the colder it is, the thicker it will be, which will make the process easier. So just keep that in mind as well. So I'll just spread that over the surface till I'm happy. Then once it's been applied like so, pop that into the UV light for about 15 minutes just to get it properly cured and hard and then we will apply some gloss varnish to the front. And here we go, here's how it looks. And you can see how it makes that uh, reflective uh, paste underneath look really nice. So now we are going to do the edges. I've got a bottle of Aerothane off to the side here. Um, and I'm just going to grab some of that and I'm going to be careful because I don't want to get any of this on the resin and I'm just going to brush that over the surface like so then you'll allow that to dry and once it has finished drying uh, we can move on to assembling our piece. The reason I'm putting the Verithane on is not necessarily because the paint needs to be sealed. Uh, once it's been baked, it's pretty much sealed and stuck onto the clay. I'm doing this because I want it to have a shiny finish. So I just wanted to say that you don't have to finish it off with a varnish. Okay, and here it is now that it's finished. And you can see it's just got a nice sheen to it. So now I'm just going to bring over a pin drill and I'm just going to find the center of this. Okay. Then once I've found it, I'll use the drill to just drill straight down through the clay. Easy peasy. Okay, and 
I'll just go back through the back. So we have a nice clean hole. Okay. Then I'm going to bring over a jump ring, open that up, pop that through the hole, bring over a bale, pop that through as well. Close up your jump ring. And I like to use a rubber cord just because it looks quite nice. And there we go. That's pretty much it uh, for the pendant. Relatively easy but a quite an effective project. Obviously you can work with any colours you want or any leaves that you want or any shapes uh, that you want or any silk strings. There's lots of ways that you can vary this project. Um, so yeah, it's quite a fun project and you can see it's quite effective. You could also use smaller leaves and end up making earrings as well. That would look quite nice. But yeah. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please do let me know in the comments below. Uh, and if you would like to support this channel so I can continue doing tutorials like this every week, please do consider either becoming a member on YouTube or even a patron. I have a link to that in the description below. Uh, both of those will give you ex access to exclusive tutorials that are only available through those means or through Etsy. I also sell tools on Etsy, so if you'd like to support through that way, that is very much appreciated. I also have a link in the description below. And as always, I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.